All right, I see a new guy who has no idea who I am. You clicked on this video because you want to know how much it costs to run one of these or maintain one of these or, or you know, just get started at all. You're sitting in the grandstands having a cold beer and you're thinking, man, I'd be, like to be on the track. I got you covered. And we're going to cover this in a fun, unique way uh, across three different skill sets or three different entry level sets, I should say, as to, you know, where you want to come in at. For your regular viewers, you're like, Charlie, why aren't you on the track? Well, Mother Nature hasn't really allowed that. We got one more practice, and we'll talk about that towards the end of the video so we don't bore the people that just want to find out the new stuff, information that I'm about to throw at you. So don't tune out, people. Hang in. You're going to watch a 20-second short little video that's just our show intro, and welcome to Old Guy Hobby Stocks. All right, you're back. Thank you for being patient, new viewers. We know you're tuning in here to find out about the money here. Here's what we're gonna do with this. And this comes from uh, Blake Wood. Hey, he sent me a message. He's like, you should do a cost thing. You're absolutely right, I should. Very few videos out there on this subject. Uh, there was, you know, when I was looking to do this a year ago, couldn't find much. There was a little bit. So uh, we're gonna try to break it down in a completely unique thing. And here's, how we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this with three levels of, number one, and I'm looking at you. I know you, you are a good mechanic. You've got all the tools, you've got the cherry picker, you got a truck, you got a trailer, you got all that stuff, you're already sitting there, you're raring to go, you just wanna get on the track. You're a different skill set. I see you out there too, dude. You, you own a, let's say you own a construction company or you got a successful business and you know, you're just, you want to go have fun, but you ain't got the time to put a car together and, and you're just going to buy all new stuff. We got you covered. And here's where the vast majority of us are probably going to fall into line here. I didn't know nothing about how to work on a race car. Yes, my family came from racing. My uncle drove, my dad was part of his pit crew, but my dad was the mechanic. I didn't know nothing. So I'm gonna go out and buy a used race car that I hope is good. You never really know now, do ya? But we're gonna put those into those three groups. Groups, groups, groups. So you've got the good guy mechanic that's already got a lot of the stuff, the new guy that just wants to spend the money and go have fun, and the budget guy who's, you know, well, I'm in the middle of all that. And I just, I got a lot to learn. And we're gonna start with this. Now, I'm assuming you all got access to a truck. Everybody's got a pickup truck these days. Trucks and SUVs are, you know, they're the, the Chevy Chevettes that we had back in the 80s. Everybody's got one. So we're going to skip right over that. Good mechanic guy. There's probably a, there's some text around my head somewhere here now. You need a trailer. Good mechanic guy. He's already dragging cars out of the field. You don't need a trailer. So boom, you're at zero dollars. Congratulations. New guy. You want the best of the best. You're gonna get yourself a decent trailer. Now you're not going enclosed. You're going open trailer. And uh, we're gonna say you're gonna spend $8,000. That seems like a fair amount for a brand new car trailer that you know maybe it's got a toolbox on it or something. I don't know, that's up to you. For the budget people, now you're on Facebook Marketplace and you're looking up used race trailers, which is exactly what I did. I've actually had two trailers over the last year. First one was $2,000, the second one was part of a package deal with this, but we're gonna call it $3,000. I've looked around, 3,000 bucks to get you a decent used race car trailer. So, all these stats are probably now over my head, or around me, or somewhere. And we're just gonna keep totaling these up until we get you to the end of all this. Tools, now, I ain't talking about hammers and screwdrivers. We all got that stuff, but there's so much more that you're gonna need. You're gonna need an engine lift, cherry picker, whatever you wanna call it. You might need a car lift. We're not even gonna go there. Uh, you're gonna need transmission jacks and all kinds of little stuff and tools and things that you ain't even thought of. You're gonna need that stuff. Now the good mechanic guy, zero. Congratulations, you still got all that stuff. You're good to go. Guy, we're gonna say you're gonna go to the, oh, I don't know where you're going. You're going Lowe's, you're going to Home Depot, you're going to the Hobo Freight. 
three grand, you're gonna drop all that on tools and just walk out of there with enough stuff to work on one of these every single day and you're covered, you're good. The rest of us, now me, I had some tools, but I didn't have an engine left. I didn't have, you know, the transmission jacks and stuff like that. And can you get away without some of that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. But I had to buy a welder, didn't know how to weld, you know, all that kind of stuff. Let me look around the garage here and see what else. I don't know, there's a ton of stuff. Port of power, because I dent this thing a lot because I'm not very good. All that kind of stuff. I'm going to say I spent 1500 bucks in tools and uh, hopefully my wife believes that. Love you, honey. Thank you for letting me do this, by the way. Now the big one, the car. Good mechanic guy. What are you going to do? He's like, I got skills. I can bend tubes. I can weld. I can do all that stuff myself. Good on you. I can't. Uh, we're going to say you found yourself an 85 Monte Carlo. It's a little rough, but you're going to strip that sucker out. You're going to go to Speedway, order yourself a roll cage, and you're doing this on a, on a budget. And we're going to say you've got, between the car and, uh, you know, putting the roll cage and some of the, the suspension parts and all that kind of stuff in it, you, you, need, a, you need the IMCA approved upper control arms in your IMCA hobby stock, that kind of stuff. Uh, you might want to switch to a floater rear end, that kind of thing. We're going to say you have $4,000 tied up in your car. This is where I'm going to get yelled at in the comment section, I know, because this is going to be all over the map. Brand new guy. You want to go fast and you want to get to the front. You want to be up there with the best of the best on the first lap. Good luck. Hasn't been my experience. You're going to call, I don't know, you're calling Ghost or Smoke or Victory or Johnny Spa or Charger Chassis or, you know, there's dozens of these guys out there that make these things brand new and they'll drop them off for you. And in various stages, you can buy them from just a chassis to a rolling chassis, which means you got the wheels and the suspension and all that's already in it, to a complete, you just jump in it and go. We're not going there. That's something that I don't think a lot of people do. We know they're out there, They some do it. So we're gonna say your new chassis, roller now, you got you got the suspension, you got the shocks, you need, a, you need to add your seat and your motor and your transmission and that kind of you know stuff. We're going to say you spent $20,000 on your chassis. Now, price police, please don't jump all over me. A lot of cars cost that. It really, truly does. And it just depends on the level you want to spend. I know you can get them down to like $14,000, $15,000. But this guy, he's got the money. You know what I mean? So he's going, he's going good. Budget used. Again, this is going to get me in trouble. These things are all over the map, and I get that. You can find junk frames already put together for 1500 bucks with all the parts stripped off them you can find race ready for 10,000 or 12,000 or 14,000 you can find everything in between there my experience is going to be all right we're, we're buying that roller that we saw on facebook marketplace this thing is we'll, we'll call this seven thousand dollars it's a decent it was it was a pro built chassis you know a few years ago she's been through some stuff uh, it's got a it's got a radiator and you know all the suspension and all that. We'll pretend that the guy didn't strip all the good stuff out on you. Uh, no motor, no seat, no gear, but you got a good, good, solid, decent, used, professionally built chassis for seven thousand bucks. So you jump on that. All right, you good mechanics on the engines now. Here, let's say you're one of those guys that you're so smart you can build your own engine. Uh, you know what a harmon harmonic balancer does. I don't have a clue. Anyway, we're going to say that you're going to build yourself a 350 whatever, uh, 9 to 1 compression hobby stock IMCA legal motor, but you're going to spend a few bucks and you're going to, you know, you need the go fast parts in that car. So we're going to say you're going to spend $4,000 on your engine. Now, I know there's guys that can build them cheaper. You can buy a 350 that's, you know, okay. It'll get you on the track for 500 to 1,000 yeah, bucks. Good good luck finding that $500 one, but we're gonna say you're doing this right. You're rebuilding that thing. You're getting the crank polish and all that kind of stuff. You got four grand in your motor. Now, uh, you new racing guys that just got the money and don't know nothing about engines, you're buying a crate and we're gonna say that you're spending 6,000 bucks. I think that's about what they are. They might be a hair higher. Maybe you can get a deal here and there a little bit lower, but it's gonna be about 6,000 bucks. Uh, budget, budget used guys that are throwing this in here, you know, you're just learning too. So my guess is you're going with a crate. If you have a local engine builder, 
he might be able to build you an open motor for say that same 6,000 bucks maybe. Uh, but we're gonna put that one down at $6,000 too. Transmission. Now, this thing is running, uh, uh, I've got a crate, I've got one open motor. We'll go into that later, but it's a two speed power glide. A lot of the guys that are running fast in the IMCA hobby stocks are going with the power glide. You can also use a three speed and all that other stuff. I get that. Uh, good mechanic guy. If you don't have one laying around, I'm gonna say that, uh, say you got a, a, a power glide shell and you know how to do all the work to make that the direct drive and the fun, you know, all that stuff. I'm going to say you've got 500 bucks in it. Maybe that's, yeah, or maybe you had to pick up a shell, you know, you know, whatever. New guy, I'm going to say you had to buy a core to start with, and then you take it to your local transmission guy that makes these things, and you've got a thousand bucks. Again, me here, Power Glide, yeah, that's about right, about a thousand dollar transmission. So we're going to stick with those two. Uh, good mechanic, carburetor. We have to run a Rochester two barrel carburetor in these cars. I'm going to say you good mechanics, if you know how to rebuild a carburetor yourself and you know some of the tricks that, you know, the, 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 the carburetor guys that cater to this crowd deal with, uh, I'm going to say you can get it done for 250 bucks. That's if you have to buy the carburetor. Uh, new guy, you want the best of the best, you're calling up, I don't know, there's half a dozen guys out there that are like really good carburetor hobby stock builders. I'm going to say it's going to cost you 600 bucks. Might be a hair more than that. And me, I'm in that same boat. Uh, the carb that I have actually came with my car. I was lucky there. It was a very good carb, but 600 bucks, we'll say, because I got, I, I ain't going to build a carburetor that's going to be worth a darn in this thing. You need that, you know, that big bore, blah, blah, school bus, truck, mo I don't know. It came from the 70s, and you know, they know what they're doing. Now, manifolds. Um, we have to run stock manifolds in this, or OEM style manifolds. Uh, if you're a good mechanic, I'm going to say, well, you know, you can go to the junkyard and pick up any set, but you want a set that's going to do something good, like LT1s or something that's, you know, coming down and a little bit bigger bore to it. I'm going to say that you're going to find them, or you got a set, whatever, 200 bucks, we'll call them manifolds. Uh, new guy, I have seen these things going anywhere from $500 for a decent set to $1,000 for a decent set. We're going to say that you, you went with the $500 ones just for sake of argument and to keep it consistent, you know, same here. Uh, budget used guy, your body used car, whatever, you're finding some manifolds because you didn't come with motor, you ain't got the car, but you ain't got the motor, you ain't got the manifolds. We're going to say 500 bucks for them too. Good mechanic. The gear. Now, you can jump on Facebook Marketplace and I'm going to say, well, okay, no, no, you're building your gear. You're building your gear. So you got you got the center section and all that, and you know what you're doing. I'm going to say you've got 300 bucks into buying the ring, the pinion, and all that kind of stuff, and cleaning her up, getting the rear end straightened out. Maybe you're running a Ford 9-inch or a floater. Uh, you want to put new seals and all that. Yeah, 300 bucks. You're good to go. You know what you're doing. Uh, your brand new guy. Gear, hmm, boy, you're just going to jump on Summit or any other, you know, place that sells that kind of stuff, and boom, you're you're thousand bucks into a gear. You, you know, talk to your local guy that will figure out what gear you need first, so you're not buying three of them. Um, me, I'm gonna say I jumped on uh, Facebook Marketplace, and you find an already put together gear that somebody's not using, and they're selling off half a dozen gears, and you you get the one that you think is right for your car. I spent 400 bucks. We'll say that. Uh, seat. Car didn't come with the seat. You know, the guy had a good seat. And he took the seat with him. Now, you good mechanic guys, you're building your own car. So I'm going to say you've got 500 bucks tied up in a, in a decent seat. You know, you can get a full containment seat. You know, not at the top of the line, but you're going to get a decent, safe seat for 500 bucks. Now, you new guys, you the seat, you know, you'd... You want to be safe, and you're going LaJoy all the way. You want the best of the best, man. You've got 1500 bucks in your seat because you want the good one, and I don't blame you. Uh, seat. I'm going to say I got the, the Kirky, you know, 16-inch <laughs> on a good day. Uh, full containment, we're, we're doing kind of middle of the road. We got 800 bucks in our seat, so we're, we're in that spot, and we're good to go. We're, I feel safe. All right. Helmet. You good mechanic guys, you probably got a helmet. I'm going to say you do. 
If you don't, you know, add a couple hundred bucks. But we, we're going to say you've got a helmet somewhere. You new guy, you're going top of the line. You're getting a Simpson. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're getting the good one. Thousand bucks. Uh, budget used guys. Now you want a decent helmet, but you don't want to break the bank on the thing. I mean, it's only your brain. Whatever. We're gonna say you bought the race quip model for say 250 bucks. You don't want the cheapest helmet you can get, but you don't want you know absolute junk either. You you want a decent middle of the road helmet. We'll say 250 bucks. Now you don't have the suit, the gloves, the shoes, all the stuff that you're required. You got to have a neck brace for IMCA. All this stuff here. Good mechanic. We're gonna say you know you're gonna you're you're going to race quip. You're gonna get the the entry level suit they got. You're gonna get the entry level shoes, the gloves, all that. 200 bucks, uh, might be a little bit more than that, but you know, we'll call that close. Uh, new guy, you know, maybe you're going with the Hans device and everything else and you want a better, better suit and you want all the good safety gear and I don't blame you. If you can afford it, you should be doing it. All of us, really. Uh, we're going to say you've got 1500 bucks into your, your suit, gloves, shoes, everything. Uh, me, honestly, entry level, I jumped in it last year, uh, suit, glove, shoes. I didn't get the cheapest of the cheap. I didn't get the best of the best. I had about $400 into it because, you know, you, you don't exactly have this stuff in your closet. You got to go get it. Shocks and springs. Now, you good mechanic guys, you still got to buy decent shocks, and you know that. It's not like you're going to go to the Napa and pick up the off-the-shelf jobs. You're, you're going to be, you know, at least going online and getting some AFCOs or some decent racing shocks at Speedway. We're going to say uh, taking care of the springs, you found some good used ones, whatever. You're okay there. You just got to get the shocks, 400 bucks. Um, you new guy, hey, you catching a break here. That already came with your $20,000 chassis because it's a full roller. It's ready. You don't need the shocks and springs. Uh, here. Now, again, you might have gotten uh, the last owner. He didn't transfer all the good parts onto his new going to the track rig. He's He's just, you know. He's being nice. He's leaving you the good parts. Then you don't really need the shocks and springs, or do you? You might want a couple sets of each, so, you know, different tracks, different track conditions, and so on and so forth. Or maybe that guy took the good parts, and he left you the junk, and you know you're not going anywhere with that stuff. We're going to say $800 for shocks and springs. It's about $400 for shocks, and it's about $100 for each spring, you know, for a decent one. So there you go. All right. We're going to just call this one miscellaneous. We're talking upper control arms, which we have to run IMCA tag, dumper control arms in this. We run the stock lowers. You know, maybe you need some ball joints, all that kind of stuff. Uh, drive shaft. I'm going to say you good mechanic guys, you got most of that stuff laying around. You know, you might have to spend a couple hundred bucks, maybe, but we're just going to give you the benefit of the doubt and say you're going to make do with stock parts and you're okay. Um, new guy, again, you're off the hook here. That all came on your new chassis. That's ready to go. And uh, me here say we need a you need new torque converter or, or you know any of that kind of stuff that needs to be added to these cars. We're gonna say five hundred bucks for miscellaneous stuff that you're just not thinking about. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Your weekly expenses. Say you got you and the misses or you and your buddy and you're picking up his uh, pit pass every single week and you got to pay for the gas. All that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, you're gonna grab a burger at the track or a soda. You know, we're gonna say that you're gonna spend a hundred bucks a week, and I think that's a fair estimate. The wife and I go sixty dollars a week for pit passes. I'm gonna burn through four or five gallons of fuel, and again, this is if you don't wreck anything. So we're gonna say hundred bucks a week. Say you, we're just gonna average it and say you run fifteen nights a year. So that's fifteen hundred bucks for the year, and that's across the board for all three categories. Good mechanic new car guy and budget used guy. Can't get away from that. So what does that give us? Oh wait, wait, I see you. You're like, uh, -uh no, Charlie, stop, stop. You win money racing. Yes, you do. Now, here's the reality. I've never won enough money to cover my expenses every night. Well, I take that back. I did one time at Dubuque, Iowa Speedway. I won $110. And I think the wife and I spent 100 bucks that night on fuel, you know, driving to and from the track, putting it in the car. We might have broke even that night. You better, guys. You're, you might be winning three, 400 bucks every other week because you're up front with the good ones. How do you do it? I don't know. I ain't done it yet. 
maybe you're doing a little bit better there, but I'm going to say that your maintenance and your winnings are just going to be a wash. So we don't have to try to figure all that out. You still need to buy tires. Oil for these things isn't cheap. You know, it's eight quarts of oil and, you know, it's just stuff adds up and that's parts are going to break too. You're going to wear out uh, ball joints. You're going to wear, you know, you're going to bend arms here and there and steering components and all that stuff wears out and then punch a hole in a radiator. Uh, we're going to say that any winnings you make are going to be a wash with your maintenance if you're lucky. So, but we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. You look like a good racer. So what do we got here? Good mechanic guy. Your costs on everything I just listed out are $11,850. That seems about right. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm sure you're going to tell me about it in the comments if you think I am. New car guy. Your cost for the entire car, trailer, everything for the season $45,600. If you can do that, congratulations, sir. You've lived a good life. And uh, more power to you. I bet you've worked hard. You deserve that car. You should get out there and do it. And budget guy. Now, I'm not saying this is my exact situation at all. Uh, but I think that was a fairly reasonable list of stuff I gave. Your price. Is that good? $24,250 for a year. Now, granted, you've got the car, you got the trailer, and that, you know, little luck. You don't destroy the car. You take it to the track next year again. You're going to be rebuilding a lot of stuff over the winter and replacing bodies, and you'll spend some money there, but your cost drops off significantly. But again, here, we're talking getting started, right? So that's what you got. Now, there are some workarounds to this. Key in my opinion, and this is the situation I fell into with this car, look for buyouts, racing team buyouts. Maybe the guy just ran out of money. Maybe he realized it was way too much work. I don't know. Maybe they went to the Motley Crue Def Leppard Stadium Tour, had a couple too many beers, and now, now there's a little one on the way that wasn't planned for. You know, find those deals. They are out there. Uh, if you can get the truck, or, or, excuse me, get the trailer, get the car, get the extra parts and shocks and springs and all that stuff at a reasonable price, you're better off going that route and somebody has done a lot of the hard work for you. Um, they do exist. Uh, if you're not looking out there, you can't find any buyouts, start watching in the fall because a lot of guys, you know, they're they get closer to the top five or they're in the top five and they just can't get over that hump and get a win. They're thinking, I got to get a better car. So they start putting the cars up for sale and you'll see for sale signs on the cars going around the racetrack later in the season. So good, good to look out for that kind of stuff there. Just helpful tips and tricks. Um, you know, and, and I didn't include everything in here. I get that. You got to you gotta figure cold snacks after the race for your crew, and maybe you treat them to a street taco here and there, and, uh, and, and that stuff adds up too. But for the most part, I think this is a pretty inclusive list. Um, if you're just tuning into this to, you know, kind of learn that stuff, thanks for sticking around this long. And consider subscribing, please. We've got a nice little community here. I'm a one-year racer. Uh, just started last year from absolutely nothing, been a dream of mine to do this. And and the rest of you that are here every week, you're like Charlie Socham stuff. Okay, we got a little bit of footage from Darlington Lafayette County Speedway uh, in a practice session. But again, everything's been rained out or snowed out, even worse. And uh, this Friday night, though, the weather's looking really good. So we're looking forward to getting out there and uh, getting in our first race of the year. We'll have all the highlights and stuff of that for you next week, we hope. So... Again, thank you, everybody. Again, thanks to uh, Blake Wood for suggesting we do this. It was something I was kind of kicking around in the back of my mind. Great suggestion. Glad we did it. Uh, and TJ Racing, uh, a guy reached out to me, and he was like, hey, uh, I work for a speed part thing. And I'm like, okay, cool. And he sent me some stuff, sent me some gloves and Summit shirt and a gift card, and I appreciate that. You know, uh, we don't make anything doing this. We don't make anything doing the channel. Uh, you know, just still learning the ropes here in racing and hope to get better this year. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll get her up to the top five or, you know, heaven forbid, a win. 
I hear Steven Tyler singing Dream On. And what's going on with Mick Mars and Motley Crue? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to Old Guy Hobbies Stocks. And uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. And we will see you next week at the track. Uh, if I have to go out and race against myself, I'm doing it. But we're getting footage on the track. So thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Really, why is Mick Mars suing the band? I don't get it.